Okay. I was going to go on a rant about how this was either... You know, first 20 minutes of this... Okay, spoilers. Full ahead. I'm not even doing an intro for it. You know where the the, the thing for my blog is. Blah, 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 blah. Spoilers ahead. That's all I'm saying. Spoilers ahead. Um, I was going to go on a rant after watching the first ten minutes about how this seemed like it was going to be a Satan Pit ripoff. I was going to go on in the first twenty minutes about how this was a Waters of Mars ripoff, which, to be fair, if you're going to rip off something, then, you know, that's that's a pretty good place to start. I was going to go off in the first... And then after the 30-minute mark, where we kind of find out what the actual plot is and what the actual shtick for the episode is, yeah, that's when things started getting kind of interesting. And then at the very end, oh, shit! And then it got weird in, like, the last minute. But that's aside the point. This... Hmm. Okay. I'm going to get run down the general conception, the, the general consensus, the general idea for this. General conception, don't mind me. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, what the general idea for this episode is, Dr. Clara and apparently Courtney, the, as I mentioned uh, last, I was going to say last week, but like four days ago, the girl who, the, uh, the student, who, by the way, uh, cut her hair. Thank you. Doesn't look like three-fourths of an afro now. Thank you. That was a good call. And, uh, okay, number one, I actually have to get this out of my way. She actually impressed me. Like, legitimately. Like, okay, you know, she's putting the pictures on Tumblr. Oh, that's adorable. Like, you know, there are a couple of moments where I was just like, eh. But, generally speaking, very impressed. Especially for a long-running uh, child actor in Doctor Who, because, I mean, we had the, well, not even long-running, really, but the two kids Clara was with from Nightmare and Silver, who just bugged the piss out of me. And, uh, like, a lot of other characters like that. Uh, I can't think of any others off the top of my head right now, but, uh, to be fair, Amelia Pond was actually pretty good when she was young. And older, but younger. Yeah, anyway... I'm just rambling now. Um. Oh boy. Um. Yeah, she was. She was pretty good. The general idea of this episode is those three go to the moon, and it's 2049, and they find out that there's a scientific team. What's left of the scientific teams on Earth sent there to blow it the hell up. Hence. My second favorite Doctor Who title name ever, Kill the Moon. Only second to uh, Let's Kill Hitler. And yes, I think both of them are better than dinosaurs on a spaceship. I just felt like saying th all three of those names in a row. So, let let's just continue on. Yeah, and here here's where things start getting kind of strange, though, is that, first of all, the spider things that are infesting the moon... just occurred to me, actually, something. When, later on, we find out that those aren't spiders, they're gigantic bacteria, which is... <sighs> it's an episode based on a concept, so I'm not gonna judge something like that too harshly, but I'm not gonna lie, that actually made me facepalm. Giant bacteria, what? Bacteria don't look like spiders. One, and two, they don't make cobwebs like spiders. Which happened. So, germs aren't spiders, so what the hell, like, what? That n None of that made any sense. It was, I think, mostly to mask what it actually is, which was, yes, there are bacteria. Yes, there is amniotic fluid in the moon as well. Because there is a giant alien creature inside of the moon, because the moon is an egg. If you're still with me, God love you. Um. Yeah, this this. Mm. 
the biggest weak spot of this episode has pretty much already been said. It some of the ideas are really out there, like even for Doctor Who. The moon is a giant egg made with infested by giant spider bacteria. Hmm. And it hatched into apparently like what looked like a giant dragonfly. I don't know. A giant dragonfly who can apparently ha lay another egg in about 2.5 seconds, which is the exact same size and shape as the... I'm sorry, I'm rambling again. But the, the bad points of this episode do really kind of make me jerk my head. But long story short, the doctor basically says, Look, this is a new creature. I've never seen it before. It's an amazing creature. And you know what? I really don't want you to kill it, but it's your planet, and if this thing hatches, it's fully possible that the eggshell parts could destroy the planet. The fact that there isn't another moon could do it. And if you do launch the nukes, then it's fully possible that the gravity of a large dead creature would suck all the parts back in and the moon would be normal. Where it's supposed to be, like, enlarging it was, which is why they went to the moon in the first place to blow it up. So... That right there is the crux of the episode, is do we kill it, or do we let it live? And the doctor basically goes, not my problem. You guys pick. Bye. And he just leaves. Now, what ends up happening is that Clara sends a message to Earth basically saying, like, turn off your lights if you want us to kill it. Turn on, Keep your lights on if you want us to save it. And we'll just see what happens from that point on. And all the lights turn out, so everybody wants to kill it so to save their lives, of course. And they go to, the TARDIS materializes again. He brings everybody else on board. Uh, those two and the astronaut who's been you know, back and forth on being a bitch, but at the same time, there's a good reason for it, so... Brings everybody to Earth, where they watch it hatch, and then lay a, a moon egg. Like I said, the logic in this one with the creature is a little... <laughs> but, uh... Where this episode was good was in the acting, and it was in that decision, and how they handled it. Of course, like, you know, the nice thing, of course, would be... Like, if it was, like, the, the spoilers for The Beast Below... Whereas for, like, The Beast Below, from Season 5, where kill the creature to save all their lives, or do that, and, you know, it, they end up making the right decision to save it. Now, that was a nice moment and everything. But I kind of, again, it's been a little while since I've seen Beast Below, but if memory serves, it was just the decision of a couple people. Now, it was a nice moment because of that. This had everybody on Earth basically saying, kill the bitch. Which admittedly is kind of... It's a little self-deprecating. Which, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's not. It's not even close. <laughs> you know, blow up the moon or have everybody on Earth die. <laughs> yeah, I blow up the moon too. But it is a little... Because of the beast below, I think it is a little... It, it did hurt a little. But then the doctor brings everybody out and everything's fine. But, hmm. The decision and how everybody, how the professor, the, the not the professor, the, the astronaut lady, I can't remember her name to save my life, so I apologize, and Clara arguing back and forth whether to save or to kill it, was a very, I, I thought that was a very clever and very smart kind of thing. And the decision was very good. I think that's why I like this episode. Generally speaking, I think this was a good episode if you can kind of ignore the giant spider bacteria and whatnot. But I haven't even gotten to the best part here. The decision was one of the better parts. When the Doctor comes back, Courtney goes back to school, and Clara and him talk for a second, she, number one, uh, Jenna Louise Coleman, Jenna Coleman, wow, she, like, you can say what you want about her not maybe doing the best acting, or maybe not maybe not doing bad acting, but maybe not just having the best acting during the first parts of it. 
she made up for it and then some. Because she tore into the doctor. Like, he had this coming, for the record. But, uh, because he has been kind of a dick all season. It's his character, I know, but he's been kind of a dick all season. Um, this. Whew. Like, she, she was in tears, and she was, she was crying during pretty much the entire bit of it. And she basically just said, like, look, you do your best to protect Earth, I understand that, but you literally walked out on us when we needed it. And he tried to explain, like, I only do what's best for you guys. It's your decision. It's not my planet. I knew this was all going to happen. That was one of the, the bigger points, was that he knew this creature was going to hatch, leave everything harmless, and then lay another egg and everything would be fine. But he wanted the decision to be made. And he had faith that Clara would do it right. Thing is, she revealed, like, she almost did blow it up, and then... It was very back and forth, and long story short, she just left pissed at the Doctor. The Doctor left, and it looks like Clara's not even going to be in the next episode. Which... Yikes. But... In... A moment that I'm not... And that was the best moment right there, was Clara digging into the Doctor. Because, number one, he kind of had it coming. And number two, it... It just felt right, let's put it that way. But here's the thing. Right after that, Danny basically comes out and says, like, Look, you're pissed right now. You don't want to see him right now. I understand that. I've, But you're still angry at him. And if you don't want to see him again, you wouldn't be angry. You'd just be ignoring him. And they're right, and they hug, and everything's very sweet. And she's just like, well, okay, when he comes back, I'll probably forgive him. But obviously... He said, basically, like, when you calm down, do that. Which I agree with, by the way. Don't make any decisions. But that's that's just me being helpful and trying to, I don't know, give a message into my one of my reviews. I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm just trying to do this in one take for once. Um, but, yeah, it, and that happens. And it's a nice moment, but at the same time, I almost kind of wish that they left the, the, the cliffhanger on her being pissed. Because it would have been... Like, Clara's, again, like I said, nowhere to be seen in the next episode. Which has one hell of a concept, by the way, and I'm, I'm just gonna, I'll get into that in a moment. <laughs> but, uh, if they left the cliffhanger on that, I personally think it would have been a little bit more in interesting. I would have been like, oh, now I have to see what's gonna, what the next episode's gonna be like. And, you know, I'm, I'm still going to. Duh. But, this, hmm. This, I, all in all, I'm really not sure how to feel about this episode. Like I said, I, I generally like it, but, hmm. Like, it's the most thought-provoking. It's got a concept. It doesn't rip off anything too badly, though. It, again, it does have shades of Waters of Mars, or... 42, I almost want to say, or, um, I just said it earlier, Satan Pit, like, things like that, like, the damned if you do, damned if you don't decision, the catch 22, that type of thing, and that's, it, it was fascinating to think about like that, but at the same time, hmm, it's just, I'm kind of just left confused, intrigued and thinking and if that was the point then well done but still kind of just confused so I would say watch it because this is again this is another one I want to see comments on because I I'm, I'm really not sure what to make of it like there's a lot of silly stuff and there's a lot of really deep stuff and the Clara flipping out on him at the end was really brilliant but I'm, I don't know I'm just I'm kind of Hmm. I'm intrigued. I'll, I'll say that. I, I I left happier than I came in with. I'll say that, definitely. So, I'm glad I saw it. But again, I'm really not sure how to feel about it, if that makes any sense. Now, I'm going to throw an episode concept for you, which is going to be next week's. I, I can't remember what the exact name of it is. 
But if I said it, it'd probably spoil the surprise. If you have not seen the episode of The Last Next Time On or seen the title, and you don't know what's coming up next, then you might, and if you have stayed this far in, you might want to stay a little longer, because I'm about to describe something that's going to be really awesome. So, we're all familiar with the Orient Express, the old mystery thing. Uh, somebody dies, and we don't know who did it, and it just kind of... It's a, mis it's a murder mystery on the Orient Express. Now, let's add in two things in here that would make this a really cool Doctor Who episode. Well, first of all, let's put it in space, so we can kind of go around with... Um, what was the episode? Was it Voyage of the Damned, was it? No. The Christmas special with David Tennant that most people don't like. And, uh, hold on just one second. Okay, sorry about that. My screen, like, my screen just went weird. <laughs> okay. Uh, like I said, picture the Orient Express. Now let's add in two things. So let's make it in space, number one. And number two, let's add in a mummy. So there's a mummy on the Orient Express in space. That concept is better than dinosaurs on a spaceship, kill the moon, and oh, let's kill Hitler. Alone. And there's also like a time thing, like, you know, there's only so long to do it. So this is going to be genius. <laughs> if silly as hell, probably, but genius. And, you know, it's probably going to have a lot of growth for the Doctor if it is just him. Which, again, he kind of deserves, because he Again, I, this is, uh, again, this is one thing I like about this episode, is that I can understand where everybody's coming from. The Doctor wants Earth to make their own decision. Makes sense. Clara wants him to help, and wants to save the creature. Makes sense. Uh, and the astronaut lady, whose name I cannot remember, wants to blow it up, because it, it's a very high likelihood that everybody would die. Makes sense. That's what I like about this episode, is that all sides of the argument make sense. Again, let's just go forward now. But I, oh, this, this next episode looks awesome. <laughs> it's going to be stupid and silly and hilarious by the looks of it, at least. It could be the most serious thing ever. If it is, I applaud the hell out of whoever wrote it to do that. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week for, uh, I think it's called Mummy on the Orient Express, actually. So, yeah. Uh, this should be interesting. And see you guys next time.